If you've been wondering how to push data over from a Google Sheet into your Bubble app, stick around, this video is gonna teach you just that. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build off of some other videos that are on this channel as well, specifically the one about using Google's OAuth2 uh, authentication method over in their API area for getting set up with Google APIs. If you don't know what Google Auth 2.0 is and you're just looking to get set up for the spreadsheet, well, what you'll wanna do is you, A, you will wanna go visit that other video, which will be linked in the description below, because what that video is gonna tell you is how to set up all of the stuff over here in Google Cloud Services so that you can uh, utilize the API to connect over to Google Sheets. So head over here on your top left to library and then do a search for the Google Sheets API click on that, and then you'll see yours as enable, most likely, unless it's already enabled like mine, then it'll say manage. And so just click that and let it, you know, spin until it, you know, fully has enabled it. And then back over in the API services area. Next you'll want to do is head over to your OAuth consent screen and then click edit app. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add, add this additional scope. So mine already has it for this spreadsheet, but we'll just see what that process is. So after clicking add, remove uh, scopes, do a search for this spreadsheets or this Google Sheets API. This will just give you all of them here. But what you're looking for is this one here that ends in spreadsheets. And you wanna make sure that that's clicked because then that'll allow you to edit it. Now there's other stuff here that we're not gonna worry about, but again, make sure that's clicked and then hit update. Nothing for updating on my end because I already have it added, but we'll just go ahead and hit save and continue. Oh yeah, another thing to note though, is that here under your test users, you know, again, the purpose of this for, for the purpose of this video is just getting set it up and getting get going with Google Sheets uh, in terms of a testing environment. So what you wanna do here is just be certain that whatever Google account that you have down here, that you also have your spreadsheet, uh, it exists in one of those on Google Drive. So that's an important point. Once you've got that all set up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the world of Bubble and we're gonna take a look at the API call. So basically, I've kinda got this, well, we did this pre-setup really for, for this, but next up we're gonna see this API call, we're gonna see the data structure, and then we're gonna see the workflows for getting the data over from Sheets into your bubble app. So strap on your hard hats, here we go. Uh, what we've got for this API call, I'm assuming that most people know how to all set this up and I'll just review each of these items in detail. So just give it a name. We're gonna set it up as an action data type JSON. It's a git and then the URL to use is here. It will also be included in the description of the video if you just wanna grab it. But what I have here is for these parameters, spreadsheet and range. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is head over to your uh, sheet and then you grab this part of the URL here and then pop that in here for the parameter. And then for the range, this is, this is how it works. We could set it like this for sheet one and it would actually come back and it would give us everything in here. But we don't want that. We really just want this data here. So. I'm not the expert in range. I'm just gonna give you the format. You could look up additional things uh, for how that is in the world of Google Sheets. But basically, you'll want to do a, if I was gonna get exact here, I'll show, two, I'll show off two methods. So you get a little bit of a hot tip here. But basically, this statement here will start us at B2 and take us until B5. So from B2 to B5. We could also get data that will come back in the format of A2 to A5, and that will give us this as a, as a list of data. But I found, just for how the data is coming into Bubble, I would actually almost prefer to take row by row, so make an API call for each row, and then just call those in your workflows. Now I'm gonna get this data, then I'm gonna get this data, then I'm gonna get this data, then I'm gonna get this data. That's how, personally, I would do it. Um, from my experience and uh, but but you're welcome to play around with 
with these settings. Now, one of, one of the things I want to point out is that if you have one of these systems where you have data that's getting put into your Google Sheet and you just want, it's going to be put in there by like some other program. Maybe it's a lead generation thing and you have active campaign or something putting data into a Google Sheet and you want to go and get that and then pull it into your bubble app, but you don't want to have to come here and change this API call every time there's a new entry added. So what you want to do is just leave that off and what this is going to do, it's going to know, so from B2, it's going to go B2 all the way down until it stops finding data and then it'll, it'll stop. So that's basically what you're going to want to do. So let's take a look now. Uh, I'm going to also assume, well, let's go take a look at this. So we're going to go look at getting a, an authorization code here. So we'll authorize with Google. You'll want to go ahead and just wherever you have this one set up, you'll go do that. And again, this is referring back. If you have not watched those other videos, this part won't make sense. But uh, if you have, you know what's up. We're getting this code, so then we can go and get an access token here, which I've actually already done. So I'm not just gonna, uh, I'm not gonna do that again because it's already there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reinitialize the call. And we can see here that the values it's come back with is 0.5215. And another thing I'm gonna point out now is that the format that this data comes back in, pay attention to how you have your stuff sorted. So if you have it sorted by, here's the principle. The principle is however you have it sorted here, sort it the same way in your bubble database because you're going to, you basically have data coming in and fingers are perfect for this and data coming in from here, right? Because these could be, uh, these four rows, this 0.5215, the structure and whatever determines the order that these come in from Google Sheets will connect directly to what is happening over in Bubble. So you wanna make this like one-to-one -one connection on, on all these, so super fancy visuals today. Okay, so I hope that makes sense because this order here, we're gonna use this order of things over in our workflows to um, to make sure that the data ends up in the right spots in your database. So next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to our world of data and actually going to, let's see, if we looked at these, this data type, I'm not gonna remake it, I'm just gonna show off just what it has in it. It's pretty simple stuff, an item name, an item price, but the thing I wanna point out is this is a number. So over here, when we reinitialize this call, it actually, it might come back as a text. In my case, I want it to be a number, probably your case too. I mean, there's just so much with numbers in spreadsheets and that's likely what you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit save there. So that that will make sure that the connection is uh, correctly made because it's the, the right type of data. So uh, then over in my app data area, I've gone ahead and I've added four entries, one for each of my food fight supply list. Um, I'm definitely going for the spaghetti. I'm going to buy the most expensive item because that's the, the machine gun of all food fights. Um, but basically, the thing that I'm point, or paying attention to here is I'm going to sort this A to Z or, or Z to A. It really doesn't matter. Actually, I'm going to go Z to A because I already started the other way. So I'll just show you that. Um, you know, obviously, we're going to go 512.5. And we'll look at the, when we pull that data out of the database, it's pretty simple stuff, but I just want to make sure that it's clear for everyone to follow. Cool. So now let's head back to the design of this page. And basically I'm going to go, this authorized Google, it's already something that's already been done. Uh, down here, I just have some testing stuff that I'm going to go ahead and just take off of here because uh, it's not necessary. So next up, we're not going to set any states. We're not going to do anything for that. We are now ready to go ahead and use that workflow that we created. So this get Google Sheets data workflow. And there's nothing really to add here because, you know, you could potentially uh, have these parameters unchecked as private or not and, and have that stuff defined here. But it doesn't really... Uh, it isn't really necessary. You're probably just setting up this one time, right? So then it can run and just do stuff in the background 
uh, so on and so forth. So it's made that API call. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna head over, this is gonna be under our backend workflows area. And we're gonna create a backend workflow. You do need a paid, paid plan for this. Call this update Google Sheet data. Nope, to be more specific, update from Google Sheet data, because you might have something updating to it. So we're gonna add some parameters here. And basically we're gonna have this be our price list. In this case, I'm dealing with prices. You might be dealing with something else, so just name it whatever you know is appropriate. And then we're gonna call this um, total item count. This is gonna be a number. And then current position within the, the looping of the count. So this is a bonus video in that it talks about looping as well for backend workflows. This price list, this is a list of numbers. Cool, so now this thing is set up so it's expecting to get all of this data and let's go ahead and give it that data. So from here, we're gonna go call this API and then we'll have to go back and work on that uh, in just a second. But we'll update this and we'll run it right now. So for our price list, here is where here's the important part to pay, pay attention to and that we have these these values each items values item bah each items val values item 1 what this is doing is it just lists it's just pulling this is the list of numbers and it is the list of numbers that came back from there Okay, so the reason why that happened, we'll just just added a new authorization token there. And so it's this list of numbers that corresponds to this. And I'm paying I'm pointing this out and I'm giving special attention to this because this will differ on yours versus mine. Most likely, unless you're following my exact same setup here where you're just pulling data from one column at a time. Whereas if you're like, hey, just go get all my stuff into one call. Again, I, I recommend splitting up the columns into different API calls. That's just uh, personal preference, but you're welcome to do, you know, what, however you see fit. Uh, because the most challenging part of all of this is not, I mean, maybe, Maybe it's you know getting set up if you didn't know how to do it before, but once you got it set up, like, okay, the challenging part is fitting the data that's coming from the spreadsheet and the API into your data structure uh, of what you have. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add that as the count because I'm just counting up all the items that are coming through here and then we pass this list over to this API workflow. So let's jump to the back end and then let's go and look at that workflow or, or uh, yeah this set of workflows, what we're gonna do is we are going to make changes to a thing. I'll point out that you might be, in your world, you might be creating a new thing for every new you know, record that comes in here. And maybe you're running this you know, at some kind of time interval to update things when, when new stuff comes in, maybe every 24 hours or something like that. Um, so let's check this out. So we're scheduling this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make changes to a thing. We're gonna to try to make changes to a thing. And the thing that we're gonna change is we're gonna do a search for all of our food fight supplies. And we're just gonna take the item number that is in our current position because we're looping through this. So then we wanna take the price that's coming from our price list and that item number is also the current position. So for the first time it goes through here, it searches for the food supply. So yeah, and then this is a, another important point and I was giving emphasis to this earlier in terms of now we're sorting from Z to A. So in the world of bubble to do that, we go by item name and we do descending as yes. If we were gonna go A to Z, we would do descending as no. So uh, this is going to basically loop through this the first time, we, you know, that you know super uh, advanced, uh, you know, one-to-one -one, uh, thing that I was making with my hands earlier is, you know, what's happening here, basically, in case you didn't know. Okay, so uh, next up, we're gonna schedule this work, this API workflow to rerun again until we've gone through basically everything, everything that's here. 
So if you have a bunch of data there, you could have up to you know hundreds of these. And just note that it is going to cost uh, workflow units to, to update this. Um, and that's just the way it is. You could additionally, uh, I know that there are some tests out there that one guy, he had a tweet storm about. Um, and he had done a number of things where he actually, and I would suggest this because here's the suggestion. Sorry, we're not in, <laughs> I'm in the other workflows, not this one. So the back end workflows. So we make changes to this one. The suggestion would be, I'm only doing four of these, but the suggestion would be making changes to 10 of these at a time or something like that. So you just add 10 workflows because the reinitiation uh, in terms of workflow costs, it actually is more expensive, but you can play around with that. That's outside of the scope of this video. But if you, if you get what I mean, then it's actually, so this would be current position. I don't think this operation works though. Current position plus one. Well, anyways, I'll link to the I'll link to the uh, Twitter thread in the uh, description, which, which you can check it out. This is only right now. This the, the purpose of this video is is just so that you can get stuff tested and up and running, and you're not worried about optimization. So that's that's another discussion. But I just wanted to bring up that point for anyone that is looking at making the most optimized use of their workflow units. So we're gonna rerun this, and we're gonna send back through the price list the total items count and the current position incremented by one. And we're gonna do this only when the current position is less than the total item count. And then that will basically get us through this loop. Once the current position is equal to the total item count, then this thing is over. We've basically looped through all this stuff because it starts with zero up till, you know, the number of items that it has. Minus one for how computers work. But let's actually go and see if this is all set up correctly. So we had the API call done, the data structure, we looked at the, the setup that I have, the workflows, we're just gonna be updating these simple prices on these five items. So, um, you know, the year 2020 came along and things got way more expensive for <laughs> uh, everything. And now we've got this new updated price chart so uh, we're going to run this here on the app now. But, okay, yeah, first off, so you can see what is actually being done here and what, what it is we're looking at. We have a repeating group that goes and finds all of these items, and we're just going to go ahead and sort them by the same way that it's sorted here. So spaghetti, hamburger patty, grapes, and banana. And then we can see the prices associated with those 512.5, which we'll see these new ones updated in it momentarily. Um, but basically it's the data here is this, and then the text is just grabbing the current cell's name and price. So you can get a view at that. All right, so let's go and test and see if we have, if we made this work. So we're gonna hit get sheet data. We're gonna cross our fingers. And then we see it happen, eight, two, three, one. And we can see it happen in that order. Now, if I had gone A to Z here, let's actually run that. We can see that this is totally not what I want. I don't want the spaghetti to be one. If it was on a discount, then everyone's gonna be buying spaghetti and no one's gonna be buying bananas and that's not the type of food fight you wanna participate in. Unless, of course, you have all of the spaghetti on your side. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more tips. That is how you push data from Google Sheets into your bubble app. Thanks for watching.